A great marriage is the same as a spiritual journey, where you discard your ego, transcend your individual desires. It's where two become one in love and devotion. Who better to ask for marital advice than my own wife? And I said to my wife, you know, I'm going to be doing a quick explanation. What advice would you give to them? And she had a bit of a think about it and she said, you know, I'd explain to Emily that all husbands are a bit like lawnmowers. They're really hard to get started. They give off foul smells and half the time they don't work. I said, I can't say that. I've got to give some more of a profound advice. So I've been lucky enough to be married to my wife for over 15 years and she isn't just my wife, she's my best friend. And I'm, when I thought about what I was going to say, I thought, what advice would I give myself, my younger self, 15 years down the line? And more importantly, what advice does our guru give on marriage and spiritual bliss? What you're about to see happen in front of you is what I can describe as a reenactment. You're going to notice the bride and groom bow down four times and four times they're going to walk around in a circle. And what this represents is four stages of spiritual growth. And what's so fascinating about it is that these stages of spiritual growth marry very nicely with marital bliss as well. So the advice for spiritual bliss is the same advice for marital bliss. And so the first step in this four-step process is that self-reflection is the best mirror. Self-reflection is the best mirror. And we hear this in the words that are going to be sung while the bride and groom are walking around. The opening lines to the ceremony say, Har pelari love, parvirti karam didaya balarangiya. And that translates to mean, in the first step, Self-reflection is necessary. Parvirti karam. And that's so true of marriage as well, isn't it? That we need to work on ourselves. We need to understand our own minds. We need to understand our own behaviors. I know that when, when I first got married, I had spent the first 24, 25 years of my life doing things the way I thought was right. The way I had been brought up, the way my family always did things. And for the first time, every tiny little thing that you do was questioned. Why do you do it like that? Isn't it better to, to do it like this? And in those kind of scenarios, you will realize that in your life together, it's a long journey ahead. And there are gonna be some bumps along the way. There are gonna be disagreements. There are gonna be arguments. There are gonna be times when you question your choices in life. There are gonna be times when you want nothing but to be really far apart from each other. And this is what marriage does. This is how being together, marriage becomes a mirror. A way of you seeing who you really are, finding out what you are. And it's really easy in marriage to start blaming the other person for everything. It's much harder to look in the mirror and look at yourself. What that requires is humility and a willingness to learn, a willingness to look at yourself a willingness to improve and work on yourself for the sake of the relationship. So the first lesson of the guru for spiritual bliss and for married bliss is self-reflection is the best mirror. So how do you go about doing this self-reflection? And that leads us on to our second lesson. The second lesson is that the best way to grow is with the right guidance. And we hear this uttered in the opening lines of the second verse. Har dujri lav satgur purkh milaya balram jiyo. In the second step of spiritual growth, one meets a true guru. And what you're going to notice that the bride and groom are going to be walking around the guru. And that's a huge reminder for the two of you. That no matter what you do and no matter where you go in life, Always keep higher wisdom at the core of your relationship. Always remember that there are people who have been on this path before. 
And what I love about this is that there's a real simple truth here. If you want to go further in life, learn from those who've gone further than you. And there are people in your life that are going to give you so much advice. Throughout your time, you're going to hear opinions from so many different people. So many well-meaning people. But the guru gives you advice. The guru uses a very important word called sangat. Your companions, choose your companions wisely. Who are the ones who have actually walked the walk? Whose advice is worth taking? That's some self-reflection that you're going to have to do within yourself. Because the quality of the people that you surround yourself with is going to determine the quality of your life. And believe me from my own experience, if the two of you are on the same path, with the same values, the same spiritual core, there is no one better in life to be your Sangat than your own life partner. So remember that second lesson. The best way to grow is with the right guidance. The third lesson is learn to let go. This is a hard one. And I can see a few people in, in, in the audience and the Sangat nodding. This is going to be a hard one. And we see this reflected in the third verse. Har tijri lav man chao paya bairagiya. In the third step of spiritual growth, the mind desires to be detached. And this is going to be the most important lesson in your life, and the one that's going to be the most difficult to follow. Sometimes we need to learn not to hold on to things. My wife and I have a rule, which is don't go to sleep angry with each other. And it sounds like a really simple rule, but it's, it's one that's sometimes a little bit difficult to follow. Don't bottle up your emotions when, when things get difficult. Talk to each other. Have open communication. You know, when my wife and I, before we were married, we were just starting to get to know each other. And Harmeet, she made me promise one thing. She said, I want you to promise one thing. I said, sure, anything. She said, I want you to promise that you're always going to tell me the truth. And I really wanted to be with her, so I would have said yes to anything. I said, yeah, sure. That sounds straightforward enough. Little did I know that one little promise was going to save our marriage time and time again. I hadn't realized the magnitude of that promise that I'd made. Because there are so many times when you're not going to want to communicate, when you're going to want to bottle up your emotions, when you're going to want to just hold on to that bitterness and that hatred that's building inside you. Don't do that at that point. Talk to each other. Communicate. Don't hold things up, but let them go. And sometimes, even when communication doesn't work, you're going to have to just learn to let go of certain thoughts, ideas, and emotions that you have for the greater good of the relationship. So these are your three lessons. And if you can master these three lessons, self-reflection is the best mirror. The best way to grow is with guidance and learning to let go then you reach the fourth stage of spiritual bliss and marital bliss. That's where you enjoy the fruits of your labor. That's where you enjoy the sweetness of life. And we see this reflected in the opening lines of the fourth verse. Har chauthari lav man sahaj paya har paya balramji. In the fourth step, the mind has found divinity and is in peace. Gurmukh milya sopai the enlightened one finds divine union which fills their mind and body with sweetness. So you need to try to fill those three lessons in your life at every moment. And then you'll have a chance to look back at your life together. And you won't just see all the bumps, you'll see the flowers as well. You'll notice that as well as difficult times, there have been moments of so much closeness, beauty when you look into each other's eyes, laughter, friendship, incredible strength and support in the time when the other was feeling weak and in need. In need. And that's what makes it all worthwhile. It's those moments that you really cherish. A great marriage is the same as a spiritual journey, where you discard your ego, transcend your individual desires, 
It's where two become one in love and devotion. If you'd like to help us create more spiritual content, then head over to our website, nanaknam.org forward slash donate and think about setting up a regular monthly donation. We're a 100% non-profit organization, so all the donations that you give us go directly into the charity and that help us to create and share Gurmat spiritual wisdom.